A recent paper published in the journal Scientific Reports analysed the provenance of the stone used to build the megalithic dolmen of Menga in Spain so that the technical and architectural skills of its Neolithic Chalcolithic builders could be understood in more detail. Situated in Antequera, the Dolmen of Menga is one of the largest megalithic structures in Europe and rather unusually is oriented to the northeast. In this video, I discuss this paper and some other interesting pieces of research about the Dolmen of Menga and the culture that built it. So why is the Dolmen of Menga one of the largest megalithic structures in Europe? Let's talk dimensions. It's 27.5 meters long, 6 meters wide and 3.5 meters high. 32 megaliths were used to build it with the heaviest, referred to as capstone 5, weighing around 150 tons. This is second only in Europe to the Grand Menhir Brise at Loch Marquet in France, which weighs approximately 335 tons. The Dolmen of Menga is made up of a trilithon entrance, a long corridor and a central chamber. Due to its epic proportions, the ancient builders reinforced the interior of the tomb with stone pillars. After the stonework was finished, the dolmen was then covered in heaps of soil making it into a tumulus. When it was first discovered in the 19th century, the skeletal remains of several hundred people were found inside it. The Dolmen of Menga is part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site that encompasses two other megalithic monuments, the Dolmen of Vieira and the Tholos de El Romeral, as well as two natural formations, the La Peña de las Enamorados Mountain and the El Torcal Mountain Range. It appears that the Dolmen of Menga was purposefully oriented towards La Peña de las Enamorados and that the Tholos de El Romeral was purposefully oriented towards the El Torcal Mountains. Both the Dolmen of Menga and the Dolmen of Vieira were built between 3750 and 3650 BCE, which corresponds with the end of the Neolithic and the beginning of the Chalcolithic periods on the Iberian Peninsula. The Tholos de El Romeral was built around two millennia later. Within La Peña de los Amorados is the Mata Cabras rock shelter, which is known for its Neolithic paintings. The El Toro cave complex is located in the El Torcal mountain range and was used for burials by early Neolithic people. Thousands of megalithic structures have been found on the Iberian Peninsula over the years. As recently as 2022, a megalithic complex made up of more than 500 standing stones and other structures was found in the Huelva province in Spain. I did a video on that discovery which I'll link in the description below. However, very few geoarchaeological studies have been carried out on such monuments. Investigations of the Dolmen of Menga have been carried out since the 19th century, but until this recent paper, no work had been done on the lithologies of the stones it's made from, and the quarries they had been transported from hadn't been identified. The researchers analysed 24 orthostats, 5 capstones and 3 pillars, and determined 5 different lithologies within these 32 stones. Due to conservation, samples couldn't be taken from all of the stones, so in some cases optical observations were used instead. The first three typologies were identified as type 1 bioplastic calcirudite, type 2 bioplastic calcarenite, and type 3 bioplastic calcirudite with microbrecia. All these three originated in a submarine canyon with a factory sediment supply. From what I understand, in geology, a factory refers to a carbonate factory. The fourth typology is calcareous brescia, originating in a submarine canyon with a river sediment supply. And the fifth typology is bioplastic calcirenite, originating from a foreshore. When submarine canyons, rivers and foreshores are referred to in this context, it means those from a paleo environment, which in this case dates back to the Upper Tortonian. According to the International Society for Rock Mechanics, these stones are classified as soft to moderately soft. The authors of the paper analysed the Upper Tortonian rocks in the area around the Dolmen of Menga to find out where the megaliths may have been quarried. The most likely origins for the Type 1, Type 2 and Type 4 stones 
other quarries numbered one and two at Thero de la Cruz, which is 850 meters to the west of the Domen of Menga and uphill from it. This means the slope of the hill would have facilitated the transportation of the megaliths to the site. Two of the orthostats and two of the capstones made up of the type three lithology most likely came from a rocky outcrop designated as quarry number three. However, due to extensive quarrying in different time periods, the exact area used in the Neolithic wasn't identifiable. The researchers were unable to find out exactly where the type 5 stones had come from due to poor preservation of the quarries. However, such foreshore materials were observed in the neighbourhood known as Los Remedios, around 700 metres southeast of the Dolmen of Menga. The tools needed to construct the dolmen would have been made of ophites, dolerites and flint and quarries for these materials were also found in the vicinity. Since most of the stones were likely transported from quarries at Thera de la Cruz, the authors of the paper conclude that transportation would have taken place over around one kilometre with a continual downhill movement on a slope with an average incline of 22 degrees. They suggest that an enormous amount of wood, ropes and labour were used for this endeavour since scaffolding and roads would have been required. The soft stones were relatively easy to work, so it's possible the Neolithic builders of the dolmen chose the site specifically because of the geology of the area. They avoided using marls, clays and unconsolidated lithologies, instead choosing materials that would be perfect for transportation and construction. Since the stones were soft, the builders of the dolmen needed to avoid water infiltration, which they did by creating a waterproof tumulus. They also used pillars to reinforce the structure and ensure stability. All of this shows that the Neolithic builders had a good understanding of the geotechnical and geological properties of stones, were skilled in transportation and construction, and had an organized labor force. It's long been argued that a number of different considerations were made by ancient people when choosing a site for a megalithic structure. Most ancient dolmens on the Iberian Peninsula face southeast and are aligned with the equinoxes. However, the dolmen of Menga's axis is oriented to the northeast, so it faces north of the sunrise on the summer solstice. Its axis also faces the mountain La Peña de las Enamoradas and specifically the Mata Cabras rock shelter within it. So it's been suggested that both of these were symbolically connected to the Dolmen of Menga. Interestingly, the Dolmen of Vieira, which is 70 metres from the Dolmen of Menga, is oriented south of southeast. It seems they were built at the same time by the same people, but chose different orientations, probably because the mountain, the rock shelter and the equinoxes were all significant to the builders of the complex. The Tholos de El Romeral, which is four kilometers from the Dolmen of Menga and was built approximately 2,000 years later by the Los Molaras culture, is oriented towards the El Torcal mountain range. So it seems that the Bronze Age builders of this chamber tomb were also interested in natural formations. What does impress me is that the builders of the Dolmen of Menga were sensible enough to transport rocks over one kilometer rather than from further afield, not like those Stonehenge builders who got some of their stones from Wales and possibly the altar stone from Cumbria or Scotland. I recently did a video on Stonehenge and the new research on the altar stone, which I will link in the description below. But even if the builders of the Antiquera dolmens did orient these tombs to geological landmarks and astronomical phenomena, we still don't know why. Perhaps it was part of an afterlife belief system, similar to what the ancient Egyptians practiced sometime later. It's hard to think of a practical reason why funerary monuments had such orientations. Maybe the dead were commemorated at annual ceremonies and that meant being able to track the year via certain alignments. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. A big shout out goes to my patrons and channel members for your continued support. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.